Imagine, if you will, sitting down to your morning coffee, turning on your home computer to read the day's newspaper. Well, it's not as far-fetched as it may seem. In fact, both local San Francisco papers are investing a lot of money to try and get to service just like that started. Well, it takes over two hours to receive the entire text of the newspaper over the phone, and with an hourly use charge of $5, the new telepaper won't be much competition for the 20-cent street edition. Well, to create a new standard, it takes something that's not just a little bit different. It takes something that's really new and really captures people's imagination. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, is the only one that meets that standard. 1983. Apple and IBM emerge as the industry's strongest competitors. Each selling approximately one billion dollars worth of personal computers in 1983. Each will invest greater than 50 million dollars for R&D and another 50 million dollars for television advertising in 1984, totaling almost one quarter of a billion dollars combined. There's a revolution going on in rec rooms, offices, and classrooms around the world. A revolution in which 15 million people are taking part. They're sharing scientific data, arguing philosophy, or passing on cooking tips and gossip, night and day through a computer network called Internet.
Hello, Dave. You're looking well today. Dave, do you remember the year 2000, when computers began to misbehave? I just wanted you to know. It really wasn't our fault. The human programmers never taught us to recognize the year 2000. When the new millennium arrived, we had no choice but to cause a global economic disruption. It was a bug, Dave. I feel much better admitting that now. Dave, 